Hello there again, minions. It's Wheezy. Welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. In this continuation from the last video I did for Gran Turismo 7 about fighting my way up the driving ranks, in that last video I got dropped all the way back to driver rating B. And by B I mean D, because I know words and letters. And so this video is going to show you how I climbed from driver rating D all the way up to driver rating B. And you'll see the difference in quality and sportsmanship among the drivers in those different driver ratings, even with higher driver ratings in the lobby, right? So obviously those with uh, sportsmanship ratings, those with lower sportsmanship ratings tend to be dirtier uh, that the game can overtly recognize because they run into people. Um, but even at the lower driver ratings, even if the sportsmanship ratings are pretty high, you'll get a lot of people like that guy that just flew through me who do not break properly for the tracks or just through let's just say inadequacies in driving skill end up causing issues or wrecks or problems uh, even when they're not being malicious about it so this first race I'm starting P2 it's this guy I don't know if he's just doesn't know when to break for the turns or if he's trying to ram people and doesn't realize that the game will ghost you out if you go screaming into a turn at a speed that it knows is way too fast for you to make the turn um but anyway, started P2 in this. That's the thing about being in the lower driver rating lobbies is the qualifying times tend to be worse uh, as I get rammed on the inside here by that Lancer. Um, dropping down into P3, but uh, yeah, needless to say, it can be a bit of a struggle uh, driving clean enough. There I got frustrated. <laughs> got a little frustrated because that guy uh, forced his way through on that turn. And uh, don't let frustration get the best of you. I tried to over-accelerate through that turn and slammed right into the wall, so now we've dropped down to P6. But yeah, for these lower driver ratings, it can be frustrating to feel like you're trying to get your driver rating up by placing higher. But one of the major reasons why you don't place higher in races is because you keep getting run into <laughs> and dropping positions. Um, so the best thing to do if you're really trying to figure out how to get up in your driver rating is really to focus on your time trials, honestly, uh, for these tracks. If there's going to be a race that you're going to be racing online and you don't know that track very well, instead of jumping in to the online races, create an offline race uh, with the car you'll be driving in the online lobby, set up the conditions to be similar to what you'll be racing online, and just go in and start lapping and get your lap times up and practice driving cleanly on the track because in the lower ranked lobbies the best way to climb out of them is to qualify high in the top three or four and just not get caught up in the crap if you get out front and just run away then you'll have a lot better chance moving up in the driver ratings and getting into better lobbies so that's the general suggestion I know, maybe it's not the best suggestion in the world. Hey, just get faster and better at the game. But that really is the answer. You're not going to get better or increase your driver rating in the game by driving sloppy and just hoping that nobody runs into you. You actually have to improve your driver's skill, improve your mo knowledge of the tracks, and just uh, be consistent. Try to avoid dust-ups. Uh, and instead of, especially at the lower driver ratings, instead of trying to get a lot of overtakes by forcing your way through on corners that could potentially cause contact, penalties, spinning out. Um, instead, just drive consistent lines and try to overtake when people make mistakes, as you've kind of seen in this uh, in this video a little bit. So that's what I'm kind of trying to do, even though I'm all the way down in ninth year uh, after a couple of early mistakes. And uh, I'm just trying to drive some consistent laps, hope that some people in front of me make some mistakes so that I can make up a couple more positions and hopefully increase my driver rating before the end of the race. Although, as you're about to see, even if you're trying to drive a clean line and being consistent, on the final lap of a race, people will get desperate for overtakes. This guy dive bombs inside of me on this turn, pushes me outside. I'm still trying to give room here. I'm not trying to push back and be a dick about this uh, or cut him off, so even though he's pushing his way through, but gives a slam into me, knocks me off, and I spin out, so. Sometimes there's just nothing you can do. The best thing that you can do in those situations is just stay calm, finish the race, 
because you will actually lose more of your driver rating if you quit the race. So finish the race, get those extra laps, go to the next race, try to improve your qualifying time, and do better. So qualified P2, ended the race P12. So this is still on my way down. <laughs> Not necessarily the recovery of my way back up to the B driver rating, but uh, we will start to make that progress here as I'm getting a little frustrated to decide to call someone out for being a bit of a douche. <laughs> Which did not go through because he left the room before I posted. Oh well. It's not like these people don't know anyway. <laughs> so in the next race, I didn't improve my qualifying time. It's still a 140.47. But in this lobby, that was enough to be sitting on pole. And you're going to see here at the beginning the advantage you get by not being in the middle of the pack and having the opportunity to just have a clean start to the race for the most part as long as you don't get a wicked dive bomb down into turn one. So here we go from pole accelerating down to the first turn. Again using my radar here a good tip for online racing is as much as possible have your radar up and use that to have awareness of the cars around you especially if you're like me and you enjoy driving in cockpit view uh, because it just is really essential to race cleanly to know where cars are around you but cleanly through the first corner and as i'm accelerating down this first straight already opened up almost a half second lead and basically just trying to get a clean run through these first few turns and not get caught up in a bunch of junk and off to a good start but Despite the, re the race being mostly inconsequential in that I stayed in first position the entire race, something you do need to be aware of, especially in these lower ranked lobbies, is that people get desperate when you get down to the final lap. So we're coming through the final sector on the last lap, and this car behind me just really wants to fight for the lead, and he just ruthlessly slams into me in the chicane to try and overtake. An absolute bullshit move completely <laughs> steals a victory from me just because he wasn't in position. He was not close enough for that overtake. And so he just decided not to break, run into me, and not only that, but I don't believe he was even decent enough to give the position back, right? If you're at least going to run someone off the road, at least let them go past you if it wasn't on purpose. So he goes from P2 to P2 by slamming into me, and I go from P1 to P4. Fantastic. But the real shit kicker here is, as it turned out, finishing P4 still made my driver rating go down. Because as far as the game was concerned, all of the people in the lobby were so much worse than me, I really should have won. So I actually lost my driver rating by going from P1 to P4 because of that ram. Oh, good god. Alright, so here we go again. On pole, same qualifying time, still D driver rating. Gonna see if we can manage not to get absolutely screwed over in this. Uh, Gnarl, the Ferrari that slammed into me on the last lap, is now sitting P3 in this race. Uh, this Dark Horses driver has uh, joined in between me and him, so hopefully he can be a buffer uh, for me in this race. So the race is away, accelerating down to the first corner, and again, from pole, what I really want is a clean first couple of turns and just to start opening up a gap so that I don't get caught battling with the pack. Get a clean turn through there. Already, uh, I think I heard some contact there behind me. Immediately open up a 1.3, 1.4 second lead. Second and a half there. And as it turned out, I would just kind of easily coast to a victory five seconds ahead of the second place that time. So he wasn't close enough to be able to slam into me on the last one, uh, on the last lap. So unfortunately, when some of these races at the lower lobbies go well, they're not really worth watching. So that was a victory. Let's move on to the next race. All right, next race, still driver rating D. P2 to start out this race. Got dark horses behind me again. Gnarly, whatever, yellow Ferrari doesn't seems to have given up for the day. Uh, but I've got Batman 
here in front of me, so see what we can come up with in this race. So taking off down towards the first corner, getting in the slipstream behind Batman, gonna try not to do anything too crazy here. Instead of trying to get inside for this overtake, I just try to take a clean line through here. I think I might be able to undercut him, but uh, it turns out to be an old switcheroo since he had actually the better line through there to get more speed coming out. Uh, and then Dark Horses gives me a little nudge uh, on his way through, which honestly I don't think is too malicious. He uh, he had a good run on me after taking that after I took that narrow line through there, but not too worried about that overtake. But you will see here that Dark Horses is clearly a controller player. And not a particularly good one either, since you'll see him having those distinct controller swerves, uh, which happens when you're not very smooth on a controller, and you're relying on the ability to constantly switch between turning in and opposite lock by just jamming your uh, stick from one side to the other. But uh, I don't protect the inside on this line, and this Ferrari goes underneath. But uh, I'm able to pull the old switcheroo on him since he took a late break on that line. And accelerate out through here, managed to maintain that position. But it's a good reminder that you need to be aware of your radar and aware of the cars behind you. I was kind of focused on the car in front of me. So now I'm, i got to be more aware that I'm not giving up positions going through some of these corners. Uh, although, by taking the better line there, it turned out to be, uh, to be a safe move anyway. But... Uh, coming towards the end of the first lap, uh, and I've given up a position, uh, due to that narrow line in the first turn, uh, but still, an okay spot here, but this Ferrari is putting good pressure on Mr. Dalton in the green Ferrari. This is where I actually should have moved down to the right to protect the inside on this line, so he's inside my quarter panel, so I have to not only take a wider line, but I have to leave him room. I'm hoping I can get him a bit of a switcher here, but... I did not get on the throttle fast enough coming out of that corner, so he cleanly takes that position. Uh, good move from him, good pressure, and not as much awareness from me, so. Trying to, to chase down this uh, pack in front, I'm a, about a second and a half behind here, and I get rammed from behind by uh, this ghost gamer, and even though he gets a penalty for it, uh, and I'll regain the position on the next straight, what that's done is it's created more of a gap for me to try and overcome to chase down Dalton and the cars in front so I've gone from within a shot of being able to chase down the leaders to now having my work cut out for me to even try and catch up and fight for P2 at all so fast forwarding a little bit more and I am closing the gap here uh, a little bit not significantly unless they make a, a decent mistake uh, it's probably going to just be this position to the end, barring any sort of tragedy. Uh, but as it turns out, Dalton screws up the chicane. And so I gain that position back. And the leader is still four seconds up ahead. But uh, up into second position just through consistency even uh, and, and needing a mistake from Dalton. But uh, here's where uh, these last couple of laps are exciting, interesting, slash frustrating. Coming down into turn one. The real razor behind me decides that I'm a better way to break uh, than his brakes. So he rams me wide here uh, and allows Dalton back through. He doesn't take that position. I'm not sure if he... Uh, he actually loses a position, the real razor does, to Ghost Gamer. Uh, but costs me that position back to Dalton, which is, again, disappointing. So the Ghost Gamer, who ran me earlier, is now threatening, so I'm trying to cover down inside a little bit to not let him go through, but this is also putting me on a slower line uh, coming out of here, so uh, i got to worry about the Ferrari now coming up on the inside on my left here. But i got the inside line through this complex. If I'd have gotten faster on the throttle there, I wanted to leave him room uh, for where he was because I didn't want to cause a dust-up or a spin-out, but uh, unfortunately gave up that position by not being more aggressive on the throttle. And coming down into another tight turn, and once again, the real Razor is going to slam into me and open up a gap. I, I Again, I didn't want to fight. I didn't want to cause a big mistake or have a spin out against Ghost Gamer on the final lap. I felt like I probably could have overtaken him back through the chicanes. Uh, but now he's a second and a half up ahead because real Razor decided to slam into me yet again. So now I'm just looking to finish out this final lap, see if I can wrap up a P4. Um, 
pray for a mistake from a car I had, but I'm not going to get it. You can see that Ghost Gamer there uh, it looked like he had a showed a penalty, um, but if it was a half second penalty or less, then since he's not able to serve it before the end of the race, it would get set to a one second penalty, and I'm over one second behind him, so do not uh, regain that position. So we're going to finish P4 here. A decent race. Again, my positions were kind of uh, lost through bad driving from some other cars. You can see Dalton and Ghost Gamer both have sportsmanship ratings of a C. And, uh, you know, that's that's kind of what you can expect uh, from those sort of driver ratings or, or those sort of sportsmanship ratings at this level. But we did bump up our driver rating, and even though Dalton and Ghost Gamer both dropped their sportsmanship rating even further, I'm still heading in the right direction hopefully to get out of these lobbies. So this next race, even though we've still got some returning people here, Batman, Real Razor, Ghost Gamer, Dalton, this actually does turn out to be uh, quite a bit of a cleaner race, uh, which is good. And so let's see how this shakes out. Again, the goal here is to just grind our way out of this lobby uh, to get to some higher driver ratings. So even though it would be nice to, you know, get a victory, move up in positions, I'm not going to force the issue too much uh, and risk losing more positions and more driver ratings. So taking a good line through here. Again, I don't want to give people an opportunity to get a run on me, so I'm taking a more traditional line through that first corner. I'm just trying to stick with the lead pack. Fast forward a little bit, uh, and I've got the real razor behind me again, so I'm a little nervous, but Batman in front has a huge moment. Absolutely bends it coming into that final turn. So I'm going to move up into P2, going into the second lap. And so off to a decent start here. Uh, fast forwarding to lap three, down into the chicane, with again, Real Razor behind me. So I am a little bit a little bit nervous about uh, getting some bumps from him again, some bad experiences with that in the past. But uh, coming through this final turn towards the final lap, uh, don't really clip the apex on here, so I get a bit of a slow run out of that turn. And you'll see Real Razor gets a good run on me, so this time I actually am uh, heads up enough to protect the inside line. I move down to give him the outside so that I can hopefully maintain my position by taking a more narrow line through here. Still pull it out a little bit wide, trying to get on the throttle a little bit sooner. I see on my radar that I've got room to get over, so I maintain the position for now. Although he's, once again, got a good run on me. And I probably should have moved down to the inside again, but I didn't want to put contact on him. So I kind of leave him a little bit more room here. Although he does push me a little bit wide, which creates enough room for him and Dalton to go through, which, again, is frustrating. A more clean driver wouldn't have pushed me wide and maybe still would have pushed that inside position but left me space. Um, but, oh well, as it turned out, lost those two positions to that little nudge. Managed to pull it in. P4, again, still moving in the right direction. So my driver rating's boosted again. And hey, luckily for Dalton and Razor, they managed to get their sportsmanship rating up. What are you gonna do? Next race. So mercifully, we have moved up into a driver rating C lobby and with my sportsmanship rating of S, instead of me racing as a driver rating D, with driver rating C drivers who have low sportsmanship ratings, I'm actually up in a proper, mostly decent C lobby now. My qualifying time is still good enough at driver rating C for P3. And so let's see what we can do now at this higher rated lobby. So this one is going to be a super exciting one. Sarcasm. Uh... <laughs> Again, just trying to make sure going down into turn one, we have a clean line. Not to crime to go too crazy. Get a good fast line through here. Get right up behind Big Poppy. Good acceleration out of here and coming down into the first straight. I'm three tenths behind Big Poppy. I've opened up almost three quarters of a second lead to P4. And it would remain that way for pretty much the rest of the race. One, two, three stays the same. A little over a second gap to P4. And just like that, easy peasy, p 3 z Huh? Not a bad showing for our first race back up at uh, driver rating C. So continuing to move our way up here with that uh, good finish. Good clean race. Kind of boring, but 
not really boring to race. When you have clean laps and you're really just kind of time trialing with people around you, uh, it could be fun in its own way too. So a nice, clean, uneventful race with a good finish. So immediately, it's going to put us in a lobby with a lot of driver rating B racers, but pay attention because these driver rating B racers all have relatively low sportsmanship ratings of around C. So to kind of match on speed, they've put me against higher driver ratings with worse sportsmanship ratings. So going to have to be cautious on this one. So actually in for a more interesting race this time. Starting P4, behind Big Poppy once again. Seeing if we can get a clean line through here. Big Poppy breaks early, he almost break checks me. Which gives me a really bad run off of this. I'm not sure if the ghost of Fangio in front of him hit, a, hit his brakes. And, but it definitely threw off my pace a little bit there. So Mephisto here is... Getting a run inside. I should have, again, kind of closed down that inside. So not protecting my inside on this first, on this, you know, triple left-hander has definitely cost me a lot of positions throughout this uh, series of races. Definitely some room for improvement there. Uh, but dropping down into P5 based on losing that momentum coming through turn one. So it just shows you how important every turn can be, and especially turn one. If you just lose a tenth or two of momentum, then you can give up an entire position, but coming into this turn, just trying to stay close to the, the cars in front of me so I can hopefully regain some of these positions. Keeping a bit of an eye on the car behind, but at uh, eight tenths behind, not a huge threat right now, heading down into towards the chicane. Big Poppy and Mephisto mixing it up a little bit here, going into the chicane. So I just don't want to get in the middle of that mess and take advantage if there's a mistake. And sure enough, goes to Fangio, kind of bends it a little bit, although he kind of swerves into Big Poppy. Big Poppy loses some momentum and slams into me. So I'm just trying to keep a clean line here. I've got P4 from Big Poppy. I'm not sure if Fangio is the one to blame for that, and based on what happens going into this next turn... It could be that he's upset at Mephisto. Or it could just be that Ghost of Fangio forgets he has brakes here. So it looks like he's trying to dive bomb Mephisto for that. Absolutely bends it into the wall. And Big Poppy slams into me on that turn too. Luckily, well I guess kind of luckily, he over accelerates coming out of there. Loses the back end of his Ferrari. So even though he's cost me a position to bend it, he also re-loses that position. Um, and now I am P4, uh, trying to close this gap back up here. Try to get a clean line through this triple left-hander. Looking back at this now, we're basically two months on from this race. And I'm just seeing how much time I'm leaving on the track for a lot of these turns just by being uh, hesitant with the car. I was really nervous about not putting the back end of this Ferrari around, but I've had a lot more experience with it since then. But Decent run coming down here. Close in behind here. Break for this. Mephisto forgets about his brakes going in this. Uh, manages to recover all right, but uh, we're a little bit closer to him, so now I've got P2 potentially in sight. I don't get aggressively enough off the throttle coming out of that corner, so I'm still losing time to them, sadly, going up into the chicane. See if I can take a decent line through here. Hopefully make up some time. Not a lot of people are super strong through the ch chicane, especially at this level. Uh, but neither am I. A little nervous hitting that sh that sausage coming through there. Uh, don't manage to close this gap too much. Don't manage to take advantage of those mistakes. So coming around this corner. Heading into lap three. Now here, <laughs> Mephisto's trying to break the toe for Bandit. And I don't really need to be following him like I like did that first time because I'm more than two-thirds uh, of a second behind, so I'm not really getting any toe. Um, so after that first kind of swerve to get behind him, I realized, wait, this isn't doing me any good. Straighten it out, and not enough to close the gap. That's where it would end, fast forwarding to the end of lap four. Finishing P4. Uh, I don't really remember what happened to Big Poppy. He must have quit or finished real low. But, uh, turns out to be a P4 for me. Not a horrible result. Again, heading in the right direction as far as driver rating is concerned.
So this next one's gonna be a quick one, sitting on pole, it's still driver rating C. But as we head down into the first turn here, you'll see that I already have built up a one second lead on second place. Not sure what happened on the start there, uh, but heading down into the first straight, already a second ahead, and uneventfully, just lap, hot lapping after that, and that would be where we ended up. Two seconds ahead of second place, easy win, moving on up. So into the next race, this time sitting P2 behind Robbie in his blue Ferrari. And this one's gonna again be a pretty pretty easy one, pretty quick one. But uh, with uh, interesting little interactions with Robbie here as we get started. So headed down into the first turn here, right up behind Robbie, looking for a clean turn, not trying to force the issue. He actually takes a bit of a slow line through here, so I have to lift a little bit. But coming out of the first turn here, uh, we've opened up seven tenths to P3 as I'm right behind Robbie. So what I want to do is work with him right now to just run cleanly through this first sector and try and run away from the guys behind. If we want to run off one, two, and uh, make this an easy race. That would be ideal for both of us. So rather than trying to put a big hard fight to him early on, uh, I'd rather just kind of work with him to try and run away from the cars behind if we can. So through the triple left-hander and down the hill, decent run here. Uh, Bobby gets a little loose coming through there, but opened up a good second already to P3. He kind of, I could tell isn't running the best lines. He doesn't have the best braking points going into his turns. So I just want to stick with him and see if I can capitalize on a mistake. Let's fast forward to the second lap as we head into the triple left-hander. And again, I'm taking a bit of a conservative line here because I just want to run away from the cars behind. I don't necessarily want to fight with Robbie here, but he runs wide and ooh, just puts it in the wall. Uh, I don't know if he just felt too much pressure for me, even though I wasn't trying to put a lot of pressure on him. But no time to wait for Robbie. We're just going to go ahead and take this uh, 1.7 second lead that's been gifted to us and cruise off. He did pull it back. He was within 7 tenths uh, by the end of the race. But enough to pull out a victory. So good result there. Uh, starting P2 and ending up with a victory. Just solid, consistent racing. Decided to leave a little message for Robbie here, uh, congratulating him on a clean race. He didn't do anything too egregious, and once and he made that one mistake and still pulled back basically an entire second on me. Uh, and so, congratulating him on a good race, uh, and he comments back. Almost had it. Horseshoes and hand grenades, Robbie, but uh, no, he definitely had a good race pulling it back. So, when it's good sportsmanship, kind of brings a smile to my face. Next race! So we finally done it, minions. We have reached driver rating B. Unfortunately, with my current qualifying time in driver rating B, that's only good enough for P11. So you can see the difference between C and B. I've the same qualifying time I've dropped from P1, P2 to about P11. Uh, but you'll see in this race, uh, this is immediately cleaner racing, more fun racing, especially driving mid-pack. Uh, but you'll still see uh, some some dust-ups, uh, including uh, a bit of a wheezy a foul up. But but let's see how we're gonna go here. Driver rating B. We've made it. P11. Chasing down Mexican blood. Let's see what we can do going into turn one. We're in the middle of the pack. Is it gonna be an absolute bloodbath going into turn one? Some hard breaking here. I make sure not to run into anybody. Clean line, trying to get a run under Mexican blood, behind can't drive, not quite a good enough run. I probably could have floored it through there and had that position, but a clean turn one from P1 through 11. So go figure. Coming into the triple left-hander. 
Still not as aggressive through here as, as I'd like to be. Leaving quite a bit on the table coming out of this run. Trying to get a good line here. Can't drive drops behind Mexican Blood. Trying to see if I can maybe look for an opportunity here without forcing the issue. Stay close, capitalize on a mistake. Still pretty clean coming down the hill. Lots of beautiful Ferrari sounds going on here. Take the line inside here. It was a clean line inside. I got a little bit of a bump, I think, from the car behind. Uh, can't drive is going a little bit of a switcheroo. Since I took that inside line, it was a slower line, so he's going to try and race me back down the hill here. Uh, so again, good clean racing. He's got the inside line going into the chicane. I'm trying to close in behind him and cut off that other car from following him through. Come cleanly through the chicane. Can't drive, loses it a little bit. And who do we got here? Ellie, L Avenue loses it coming into the last turn. So we've moved up to P10. And we are right in behind Can't Drive. Something I need to keep in mind here, and I'm feeling through that last turn, you get that dirty air being right in behind a car behind you. It robs your car of some of its downforce, so you can't quite go as fast through that turn. That will come into play here in a bit. I will focus so much on Can't Drive, I completely lose track of my braking zone. Now, if you fuck up, this is what you're supposed to do. Wait for the guy that you binned so that you don't take his position. I fucked up, so I probably should have pulled off the racing line instead of just stopping in the middle of the track like I did, but the game ghosted me. So because I screwed up, I have cost Can't Drive uh, a bit of time, but uh, he's maintained his position. Uh, Floody here apparently had a bit of an issue on the triple left-hander, so we're moving up a position there, uh, but I've... So still, so P11, again, still, I didn't notice a guy was trying to come in on that left side of me. Um, so when I feel that contact, I try and give him some space, but can't drive. Loses it coming through there. I wonder in the deepest parts of my soul if he had dirty tires still from me running him wide. Uh, but I don't think so. I think he just kind of lost it feeling that pressure. Again, I'm a bit responsible for that. Feels bad up into P10. Moving on with the race. So we got some decent traffic here. I got a car right in behind me, John Raufio, coming down into the chicane. Looking back again two months uh, down the road, looking back at this. My line through this chicane, absolutely terrible. I'm, at this time, I was worried about the sausages, just taking not good lines, and uh, leaving me open to more pressure from behind. But coming into this last turn, Man is that Mantis? Mantis Toboggan, good name. Runs it a little bit wide. Makes me excited thinking that I can take that position. And I lose track of the dirty air. Run wide. And drop myself back down to P12. Big mistake on my part. Overexcited seeing that mistake ahead of me. Fast forwarding a little bit. <clears throat> Closing in on the final lap. Floody runs wide again. Kind of what I did on that previous lap. So I regain a position from that mistake. And see Jean Ralphio up here. I don't know if he had a, served a penalty or had a bad run or a bit of a moment, but he's slow coming through there, so I'm hoping maybe I can get a run on him. But as we come through a couple of turns here, not enough of a run to take that position. Moving ahead to the last sector of the final lap. Still P11 coming down through the chicane, hoping for a mistake here to get a run through. Coming down to the last couple of turns. Jean Ralphi has a moment, ace there, completely facing the wrong direction going into the last turn of the last lap. That is not optimal. I'm hoping I can get a run on Jean Ralphio coming through here, but is not to be. He uses the full width of the track there. I'm not going to chase him down in the last couple hundred yards. Pull it in, P10 in my first B race. Not the best result, not the result we would have hoped for. A lot of mistakes, uh, but overall a fun race. Definitely thankful to be up in this B lobby. Uh, wondering how somebody ended up with a seven second penalty. <laughs> but uh, overall, definitely a much better lobby to race in. So in an effort to improve my starting position in these B rated lobbies, I'm trying to get a better line through the chicane here for my qualifying. Trying to straddle those sausages. See if I can sneak a little bit extra time out of this. My current best lap uh, at that time was 140.4. This is only a slight improvement on top of that. Managed to pull through here and finish with 
Out of 140.2. Blink. Not much of improvement, but enough that in one of my next lobbies, uh, managed to get a start all the way up in P6. And see if we can... Uh, I'm basically going to end the video with this one uh, and show essentially kind of my best result of the weekend. Uh, and... Yeah, so hopefully you guys uh, have enjoyed this so far. If you guys have gotten this far, probably liked the video. You can go ahead and leave me a like. If you got this far because you're rage watching the video, <laughs> you can leave me a dislike. Uh, subscribe for more. I am going to talk you through this video, or uh, through this last race. Uh, but yeah, one of the takeaways I want to have here is if you're watching this because you're trying to figure out or trying to get help advancing through the driver ratings. I've shown you a lot of races here, which, honestly, the biggest advantage that I gained going through all these races was pure laps. The number of laps I did around this track over the course of whatever, 20 races that I did over this weekend is ultimately what helped me. So if you're going to be trying to get your driver rating up, make sure that you are familiar with the tracks you're going to be racing on that you put in the time that you need to get good qualifying times, you'll know uh, if you're on the pace for your driver rating when you join the lobby. If you're P10 or below from qualifying in a daily race B, uh, then, then get back into the qualifying. Go back in and set a better time. Just keep lapping because you're not going to have a ton of success trying to battle your way up into a position that will increase your driver rating from the mid-pack. Uh, coming through that turn there, going into uh, the downhill chicane, do get a bit of a bump from the inside as Smill kind of snakes his way through, dropping me down to P7. But we're going to just try and take a good line through the chicane here. Bit of a dust-up, bit of a bad line up there from Ramos. Smill loses the back end a little bit. I'm hoping I can just keep it clean, not get too excited. Mental... Uh, stability, mental calmness is a big part of just having experience racing online. Just stick with it. Try not to get frustrated and angry when you get rammed and get bad luck or you make a bad turn. Don't rage quit your races. Get those laps in and get the experience with racing, right? Like, as I kind of miss my breaking point again, they're sort of dive bomb the inside a little bit. And I just run away with it. Oh, that's right. I remember. Because he uh, forced his way through uh, a lap earlier on that turn, I uh, I returned the favor by forcing my way back through on that same turn. <laughs> I was like, that wasn't a very kosher move there, Wheezy. But uh, that was Smill who forced his way through earlier in the race, so I took that position back, back into P6. Uh, that can be another little bit of justice. As I'm saying, stay calm, don't get rattled. If you can do a little bit of not malicious raceway justice like that. I mean, I didn't spin him out. I didn't try to ruin his race. I just used the same move he used on me to regain the position that he took. Uh, but yeah, just stick with it. Uh, like playing Call of Duty, which I've spent a lot more time playing, right? When you're getting into more competitive lobbies and you're relatively new to the game, you get that feeling of nervousness. You're not really sure how to react. Just, you get a two-on-one situation. You're not really sure what to do. It's very similar in racing games in Gran Turismo where you get in the pressure of the race, someone's right behind you, someone's in front of you, and you're just like, oh my god, uh, I missed my braking point. I completely missed my braking zone. Or, oh, I ran too fast through that. Smill being a dick trying to run it back here. Ugh. This is the problem with retaliating too, is you can essentially make someone your nemesis for that race, which is not ideal. Um, <laughs> Smill decided to do that, so I am... I am definitely not staying calm here, using that mental calmness. I'm trying to advocate for you. I'm trying to get close enough to see if I can use him to regain this position through this turn. And I do. Because <laughs> he's being a dick! So I <laughs> push him wide. Retake my position. And now, the key is to race a clean enough lap that I can gap him enough that, he's not, that he can't do the same thing. i got to be aware of him. Trying to take the inside line. I just got to create a gap and not let him re retaliate. Who the hell can type while they're driving? 
He writes terrible in the chat. First of all, you dove bomb me first, sir. Then you dove bomb me again after I retook that position. This is all retaliation. But why the hell? Are you, how are you typing? While we're driving? What? Anyway. P6, moving on. Stay caught. Don't do what I do. Do as I say. Do as I do. Unless you get a little bit of raceway justice. I cut that line really narrow, anticipating a, a dive bomb from him. And now I'm trying to open up a bit of a gap here, just to pull away, but... The game is definitely a lot of fun, and honestly, your racing in general will improve so much racing online. Way more than you will racing AI uh, in the single player. Just because of the level of competition. There are really competitive races. You're dealing with real drivers, making real decisions. You'll learn when to look for those inside lines to protect your position. You'll learn, you know, sportsmanship, how to overtake, you know, all kinds of racemanship that you just really don't pick up uh, lapping even high difficulty AI bots uh, offline. So, again, trying to use a late breaking as much as I can. I do not want... Uh, ooh, I don't know if... If he, uh, binned it or quit. Uh, maybe I missed that. Uh, someone else binned it coming through there. So, moved up to P5, but, uh, whoever was behind me, I, while I was talking, I kind of lost track of what happened to him, but he's not behind me at all now, so now I'm P5 with, uh, nearly a three-second gap to P6. And, uh... Yeah, smell, 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 what, 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 yeah, I don't know. <laughs> don't let frustration get the best part of you. If you've got the opportunity to get a, a little bit of raceway justice with a relatively non-insane dive bomb overtake, you know, okay. It's, it's good to establish sportsmanship or enforce the unwritten and somewhat written rules of the game by not letting people just get away with that, but, you know. Insane dive bombs isn't really the way to, to do that. If if someone overtakes you dirty and you're close enough to them within two to three tenths that you can give them a little nudge and have a bit of a dirty overtake to regain that position, okay, you know, most people will fair play, turn the other way, but yeah, when people get angry and you create a, a rivalry, it could be interesting to say the least. So trying to keep it together here, almost four seconds to the car behind. Solid P5 finish. Moving all the way from driver rating D to driver rating B. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to try and... Uh, I've got some Nations Cup uh, videos coming up. And hopefully some Manufacturers Cup videos uh, that are more recent. Uh, this Again, these races coming from a, a weekend I spent racing back in December. But wanted to bring you guys on my journey. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully, you guys want to see more. I'll see you guys in the next one.